It's brutally hard. One day, 36 holes. You got to play well. There's a lot of guys that are very deserving to qualify. You got to go out there with a clear mind and be ready for that, the long test of golf. I'm Brandon Wu. This is my fifth time trying to qualify for the U.S. Open. We pick up Brandon Wu's story in Dallas, Texas, a lone ranger in the Lone Star State. Brandon isn't from here, but for him, here makes perfect sense at the moment. I've been in Dallas for a little over two years now. I graduated in 2019 and then pretty much, I think, uh, early 2020 moved here. I've been living here ever since. I did engineering at Stanford. It was a program called product design. I've always loved cars, planes, like things that move. Product design was a perfect balance of kind of the engineering side where you got to study physics and all these other engineering courses, as well as some more design courses and group projects in that space. But also I think just building relationships as well. I think that's another big hurdle you have to juggle with professional golf is learning to interact with all the different people, the different other professionals. And yeah, I think that really helped me. Living kind of right in uptown Dallas, uh, I wanted the views of the buildings and just to kind of have that city feel. It gives me plenty to do off the golf course. I'm over here is some of my golf stuff. It's popular when my friends come over. I have a bunch of Scotty Camerons that they like to take a look at. All these head covers are kind of unique and special. For example, this is actually from the US Open in 2019 at Pebble Beach. They make unique ones for all the majors. I think the U.S. Open to me is the most important tournament on the schedule. That's a little bit due to my personal history with it. I remember my dad taking me to my first one at Pebble Beach in 2010. I went to the Olympic Club in 2012 and finally got to play my first one in 2019. So the U.S. Open has always been special to me. Brandon has been through the qualifying rodeo before. In 2019, he made it through all the way to the main event at Pebble Beach, and then he made the cut, which left him with a tough choice keep playing the weekend at the U.S. Open or go back home and attend his college graduation. I honestly think I wouldn't have missed U.S. Open Sunday <laughs> for graduation. I recall waking up Sunday morning and obviously I was super stoked to be able to play in uh, U.S. Open on Sunday, but you know, kind of the feeling of a little bit disappointed that I wasn't walking with my classmates and my friends uh, graduating. But, you know, those soon became final round nerves and everything was fun. At every final stage qualifier for the U.S. Open, there are a million things that can go wrong. But as he goes into his fifth time in this event, Brandon is only focusing on what can go right. It's, it's brutally hard. Obviously, a lot of internal pressure that comes with it, but it, it's just a tough format. There's a lot of guys that are very deserving to qualify, but I've got to go out there with a clear mind and be ready for that, the long test of golf. Good morning and welcome to Lakewood Country Club and the 2022 U.S. Open final stage qualifying. Please welcome Brandon Wu. With a good night's sleep in his own bed, Brandon is off he manages his way through the first 18. But a few missed opportunities leave him on the outside of the top 13 looking in. Then he hustles across town for his second 18, though he's not worried about what the rest of the field is doing, only what he can do to get his name moving up that leaderboard. Definitely wasn't the start I was hoping for or envisioned, um, but you know, luckily I birdied two of the last three to bring it back a little bit and hopefully, you know, play really well in the afternoon and can still have a chance. I don't really know where the scores stand. I'm kind of, I think, keeping that same sort of attitude and mindset where I think if I just go out and play as well as I can, I, it'll take care of itself. You heard the man mention golf's longest day. Before we get to round two, let's do some quick math on that. Brandon left his apartment at 6 a.m., got to course one, played, eight, then headed to play his second round where he is set to tee off at 145. For a nine to five kind of person, that's a full day. But for players in this competition, it's only the half of it. 
Round two starts way better than round one. Two birdies on his first two holes pull him back to even par for the day. But after making the turn and needing a strong back nine to have a shot, a trio of consecutive bogeys seal his fate. A tough day, definitely a little bit disappointed to not play better and not have a good chance at qualifying, but I feel like at the end of the day, you know, I'm super fortunate to be playing golf for a living and to do this professionally and to, you know, even on days like this, it's, it's not too bad. And, uh, you know, the best part is you can always try again next year, so all the best. Not the result he wanted, but understanding of the final outcome, a pro through and through. The good news? A chance at redemption is just 12 short months away on the open road.